here's 12 Sports. Welcome to Double OT with Moy Hirschkorn. I'm Yanni Krakis. All right, this is a big game, a Super Bowl centric Double OT this week and next week leading yep. up to the game on WPRI 12, February 7th. All right, let's start with this. Um, you have the greatest of all time. You have the best player in the league going at it. You know, quarterbacks on the marquee. You have Chiefs in the Bucks. First time ever, home team gets the uh, Super Bowl in their own city. Is this Roger Goodell in the NFL Brass's dream matchup? Coming into this year, it, it is, yes. And then we got the precursor in week 12, which mm -hmm. was the best game in the NFL this season between those two. And uh, had Tom Brady had another opportunity to get the ball, maybe they beat the Chiefs that week. But it is. I mean, you have Brady, who's the best quarterback of all time and a surefire Hall of Famer. And then you have Patrick Mahomes, who's the youngster, who seems like he can build his own dynasty mm -hmm. similar to what Brady did in New England. Yeah, this is a, a no-brainer, absolutely, for the reasons you just said. And I think it's a win-win because if, if Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs win, it's back-to-back -back first time since 0304 when the Patriots did it. And it's the start of, we think, a dynasty. I think anything under three Super Bowls for this group would be a disappointment. Um, and they have so much talent. They have the coach. They have the quarterback. So I don't know what's going to stop the Chiefs. Obviously, they'll lose some guys. There's a salary cap for a reason. You're not going to be able to keep everyone. But um, this could be step two on the championship rung in their dynasty. Consequently, for Brady and the Bucs, they can sort of put a hole in the in the Chiefs dynasty. Like when you when you look back at it now from a Patriots lens, beating them in the AFC Championship in 18 and getting that last one with the Rams, you like almost stole that from the Chiefs. That could have been the first year uh, of the Chiefs run. So yeah, you have the, the greatest of all time, the best player in the league. Um, and I think it's cool that, that Tampa's been a, a franchise that hasn't done much of anything other than their 0-2 Super Bowl win with John Gruden, and it's in their own city. So uh, a lot of cool things. Obviously, easy to market those guys. Yep. And so many big, like how often do we see Super Bowls where you know the quarterback and you're like, don't know many other, like who besides maybe Jared Goff and Aaron Donald did anyone know on the Rams that year? Correct. You know what I mean? Yep. You could probably, uh, an average fan could name five Chief players, five Bucks players, and you have Antonio Brown coming back, Gronk, Brady. I mean, the list goes on of, of stars uh, on all these teams. No, these are coaches that have been around. These guys are on your fantasy teams every week. I mean, it's, right. that, that's what it's all about. Um, and then when you look at it, with both quarterbacks, they're both two and two in their career. Yeah. Uh, and so, so it's a chance, you know, to kind of get a leg up on on the other one. Uh, but I think it's going to be great. And, and like we mentioned with the home field advantage, I mean, there's not many more firsts that Tom Brady could right. have in yeah. his career, and he, and he said that himself. Uh, and the fact that he can get it now in 2021 is pretty remarkable. All right. So let's talk about Tom Brady, and he of course has six Super Bowl wins. Um, and I wanted to see where this would rank. Um, in his seven, should he win? And I was going through them all, and um, I'm actually going to put it number two, two behind the, the first, fingers. behind the first, okay. because it, if you go back, they were double-digit underdogs to the Rams, the greatest show on turf, Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, and no one knew who Brady was. He was akin to Nick Foles winning with the Eagles, or even worse, because he was the first time he was a starter all year. He was a game manager. I put that one. And while I'm tempted to put the win over the Seahawks because that had been 10 years since they won and it was the start of Deflategate or the 28-3 win over the Falcons because he was suspended that year and how they won that game coming from 25 down. I just think what it takes to win first year of the program into a pandemic, new team, new conference, and going through Breeze, Rodgers, and Mahomes, I think I'd put this number two uh, for Brady all time. Yeah, I would agree with you there and put it at number two. I think just... It's especially remarkable that, that he can win it in this type of season. I know last episode we talked about how the player can find more success than the coach right away because they can put themselves in a specific situation. Um, but, yeah, with COVID, uh, a brand-new organization, you bring your own guys, you put it all together. And then we've seen the Bucks were 7-5 and five at one point this season and the Patriots were 6-6. Six and six. There was a one-game difference That's after true. 12 weeks. Uh, and, and in typical Tom Brady fashion, Bill Belichick fashion, 7-0 and for Tom Brady uh, So the last seven weeks. Something the, the Brady-led Patriots always did was improve as the season went on. Yeah. Uh, other than that last Super Bowl year where they sort of puttered down the stretch and ended up winning the Super Bowl, obviously last year on the way to a wild card loss, they uh, declined too. But that is a Brady trademark. And I think it was key. They had their bye, I want to say, week 13. Week 13. They really regrouped. Uh, they had a softball schedule in the end. They had the Falcons a couple times. Yeah. Uh, I'm forgetting who else. 
maybe Carolina. So it's sort of all lined up. Yeah. But I would say this, uh, I'd have to go back and really think about who they played in route. But he's never won the Super Bowl as a wild card. So it's one extra game. He's won three games already. Doing it all on the road and beating two future Hall of Famers, three if he gets past Mahomes and Breeze Rogers and and uh, Mahomes would just be nuts. So, uh, and it's almost like if he loses to Maury, no one's gonna be like, oh, Brady choked. He's playing with house money. I even thought if he lost in Green Bay, this season was an ultimate success. So, uh, yeah, somehow you add to his legacy. Some, I saw this somewhere on social media that uh, you can split Brady's career in half and you could make the argument that half of Tom Brady's career is the greatest quarterback and the number two greatest quarterback is Tom Brady 1 point or 2.0. 2. 2. Wow. Because um, they would each have like three Super Bowls and three or three and four yep. and a ton of records and accolades. So uh, it's remarkable. The, the interesting thing is when does, when does his extension come? Does that come this offseason? I would think, think so. And Why add not? another year to make it two more years? Or two more. Two more. Two more. <laughs> Why not? I know. I mean, so he, next year would be his age 44 season under contract. He said he's wanting to play to 45. Right. So, Yeah, even uh, Max Kellerman's apologizing for his off-the-cliff remarks. I think yeah. that was like now five years ago. All right, we mentioned uh, it a little bit is the home field advantage. So it's obviously the first time that a team is ever playing a Super Bowl in their home stadium. Um, is this an advantage for Tampa or – is it an advantage for Kansas City because they're not traveling until Friday or Saturday? These teams, having covered some Super Bowls, are bombarded with obligations and media while they're at a Super Bowl site. In some respects, it may even benefit Kansas City more. I think it benefits Kansas City more, Yanni, because it's going to be a typical road game where Tampa Bay, there's so much media and there's so much press, they're not used to that type of attention at home. Right. At least Kansas City will go through everything from r remotely, and it'll be like, okay, we're meeting with reporters on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday leading up, and then we hop on the plane Friday. We get there 48 hours in advance or 72 hours in advance for COVID protocols and testing. But I think it helps Kansas City. Yeah, they stay in their I bed agree. longer. They're not in a hotel. Um, and I just think being at home, like I mentioned with, with the Bucks. It's just, it's just a different feeling. I think there's more of a schedule for yeah. the Chiefs. And, and someone mentioned this the other day. Raymond James Stadium has been transformed from Buccaneers to all NFL logos, Super Bowl 55. These guys are driving to practice, and they're seeing all the street signs. So they're feeling it. Yep. They're feeling the event. Like, as you said, Kansas City is not. Uh, I'm wondering if, if Bruce Arians maybe next week, maybe by Wednesday, has them in, in a hotel. This week they're at their homes. and. I don't know. Like some teams, you know, stay in a hotel even if they're in their home city the yep. night before. We'll see how that goes. And it's interesting to see how the fan situation works out. Like, is it split down the middle for actual fans for Bucks and Chiefs fans? Uh, or all the, I know, like every state is represented or every NFL market in terms of frontline workers, but are there going to be more doctors and nurses that are Tampa based that'll be there who are Bucks fans? So that'll be interesting because. Green Bay had fans and Kansas City had fans Sunday. So I think the ticket prices is the most um, yeah. wild part of it all. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like some tickets going from 11000 all the way up to 75000 At high least as Chiefs fans last year got one. Like if it was Buffalo, think sure. about if Phil's Mafia, first time in the Super Bowl since the 90s, they would have been probably willing to pay that. All right, let's make it a uh, Patriot-centric cent question now. Um, as everyone is declaring Tom Brady the winner over Bill Belichick in their divorce, and everyone knows about the 7-9 record, and the discourse is, is sort of added on the Patriots' bad season for two more weeks because Brady's in it, and it's just natural to compare Brady and Belichick. Um, do you think all of this motivates Belichick any more than he would have been? I mean, I think the cliff on Bill Belichick's shoulder was already – there was already a big cliff on his shoulder. There, there's already a big chip. Um, I don't think so. No, I think because he has so much internal motivation to be the best, mm -hmm. tracking down uh, Don Shula for most wins of all time. Yeah. Um, so close to, to winning the most amount of Super Bowls. If Brady doesn't win this seventh, um, then, then you know, Bill will be able to have seven as a head coach. So uh, I think there's already so much on uh, Bill's shoulders to uh, be the best that he can. And I think he drives himself enough that I really don't think he cares um, I think, no, I don't think he cares. Keep it at that. 
So I agree that I think Bill Belichick is always supremely motivated. I don't think he was waking up at 6 in the morning and now he says, let's put it for 5 a.m. because Brady's there. Uh, but I think he hears what's out there, and I think it's a little fuel to his fire. Um, and I think specific to his team's shortcomings this year, there have been years uh, when the Patriots didn't have enough talent, like 06, and then before 07, he re reloaded. After 13 and into 14, he reloaded with, with Darrell Revis and some others. So I think purely from a Patriot perspective, and we know they have a lot of room under the cap, they're going to reload this year. Um, but Belichick can't like all the stuff that people are saying. And even if it's through, you know, proximity of his girlfriend getting defensive about uh, Tom Brady on Instagram, I don't know if you saw all that. Yeah. Um, maybe at the dinner table, he's, you know, mother effing everyone who's praising Bill or praising Brady. And then his, his wife feels it and then she lashes out. But, um, yeah, I think, I think Belichick you know everything you read about him and all the patriot books that have written he uh he holds a good grudge he doesn't forget things uh and he's supremely confident and he did a couple things this year that he hasn't really done in the past which is sort of defending the success they've had like hey we sold out all those super bowl runs the last four or five years this is what happens after this um someone asked you know after a lean year, do you appreciate that? And he was defensive and said, there haven't been a whole lot of lean years here. So um, once in a while, he likes to flash the rings and remember, uh, show everyone he's the, he's the greatest. But actually, my boy Colin Cowherd uh, threw, this, threw this out there today is, if Reed gets three or four, let's say with Mahomes, yep. and he has the four NFC championship wins with the Eagles, yep. you could make the argument Maybe not better than Belichick, but he did it with two different teams. Yeah. He had his Mahomes and won his Super Bowls like Brady did with Belichick, or Belichick did with Brady, and he did it with maybe, depending on what you think about Donovan McNabb, someone not as talented, yeah. and even did well with Mar uh, Michael Vick and with some other folks. So um, if the Chiefs go on a run here, you're, you're going to have to start putting Andy Reid up there with some people. Oh, Andy Reid can, I think – if he continues to have the success he's had with Mahomes this year, they, he can be up as high as fourth all time. Yeah, wins. He's only 61 years old. Yeah. He's not, not as old as you think. So he can go coach another 10 years, and we know Bill is, is approaching 70 quickly. Uh, one more thing back to the Belichick more motivated. I think his level of motivation is the same as when Brady signed in Tampa Bay or Brady told the minute he told him, sure. hey, I'm not going to resign. Yeah. I'm gone. I don't think it mattered if Brady went 0 16 or Brady went 16 0 and got sure. to the Super Bowl. I think he just wants to have success yeah. without Brady regardless. And we still got to figure out, Rosie and I talked about this, if, if Brady gets asked this week, has Bill reached out? Because uh, I, I think he reached Tom out. Brady Sr. said that Kraft within 24 hours texted Tom. Yeah. You know, they're super close. He's the fourth son or whatever but uh but if there's anyone who's a pro at dodging questions it's tom brady so i'm sure he'll do that all right we'll have much more coming up uh next week leading up to the big game thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time